Judge Lauren Lake loses patience on paternity court. This whole relationship is on the line. You all both have professed your love for one another in this courtroom. And yet, I have barely heard testimony that would support this relationship, like being healthy, happy, productive. Even when I asked you to take me back to the time when things were happy, it just started off with drama. Get ready for the shocking tale of a serial cheater. You won't believe what unfolds as the cameras roll in the explosive paternity court today. Miss Ellison, the woman who betrayed her boyfriend with Mr. Jenkins, now demands he take responsibility for her child. Strap in for a roller coaster ride of emotions. First of all, Your Honor, Miss Ellison had many partners, many sex partners. Wow. When I first met Miss Ellison, ten months into our relationship, she she made it known that she still was in a relationship with her boyfriend. Oh. I mean, I done seen Miss Ellison with many guys in and out of their cars. I mean, just with many guys. Hold on tight, because things are about to get wild. Miss Ellison, juggling two men simultaneously, claims Mr. Jenkins is the father. But wait a minute, isn't there a strong possibility that her boyfriend is the biological dad? Brace yourselves as the truth unfolds. She insists she was honest with both men about her pregnancy. While you were pregnant, who went with you to doctor's appointment? He, I did. my mama. He took me Man. to about three doctor's appointments, and that was it. Three and doctor's appointments, and he didn't want to go. And three that was hard for him to do. We had to beg. And so the ex-boyfriend that you contend could potentially be the father of the child as well, you didn't invite him. No, no, Your Honor. In a shocking turn of events, Miss Ellison put Mr. Jenkins on child support without confirming his paternity. Unbelievable, right? Now, Mr. Jenkins fights back, refusing to pay a dime for a child he believes is not his. The judge and the entire audience are left bewildered. Why didn't she seek support from her boyfriend? Because you understand this man has been ordered to appear in court so that he likely will be held responsible for child support? Yes, Your Honor. Wages could be garnished if he doesn't pay? Yes. And the truth is, paternity has never been established. No, Your Honor. Curiosity intensifies as we delve deeper into this intricate web of relationships. For over a year, Mr. Jenkins and Miss Ellison were together, so why is he suddenly walking away? Is his absence from the baby's life the catalyst behind Miss Ellison's demand for child support? Is this a clever ploy to reel him back in? Brace yourself for the truth. He did not want her talking to the other person. Okay, so she and cut him off. And at the same off. time, I was trying to tell her, you know, they both could potentially be the father. <laughs> you need to keep him involved. And because she loved him so much, she, she respected him and did what he wanted her to do instead of doing what the right thing was to do. The moment of truth has arrived. Did Miss Ellison manipulate the situation to hold Mr. Jenkins in her life? Or is he truly the father? The truth is finally unveiled. But what will Mr. Jenkins decide? Will he stay or will he walk away now that he knows the undeniable truth? Don't miss the captivating conclusion. Mr. Jenkins, you are her father. <laughs> Miss Duvall and Mr. Hines come to the court to settle the paternity issue of little Robert. Miss Duvall says that she wishes to save her relationship, and she loves Mr. Hines, which is why she wishes to prove that the son is his. Mr. Hines says he loves Miss Duvall, but is still doubtful about Robert's paternity. As time went by, I got older, I got more established in myself, and I seen her again on Instagram. We exchanged DMs and everything. As that relationship progressed, uh, we started getting deeper and deeper in, but as we got deeper and deeper in, there started to be red flags for me that she might not be as faithful as she say she is. Judge Lauren asks Mr. Hines why he's doubting Miss Duvall's story, and he says it's because throughout their relationship, there have been plenty of moments when he would suspect Miss Duvall of doing something fishy, often due to Facebook messages, pictures, her disappearing for extended periods of time, etc. Besides the messages, do you have anything concrete, Mr. Hines? Yes. When she gets mad and when she gets frustrated, she sends me pictures with other guys. She sends me text messages questioning the paternity, saying, I can't believe you're trying to take him and you don't even know if he's yours, which would immediately Wait a minute, 
Miss Stovall, you sent him pictures of you with other men? They were friends of mine. Mr. Hines then tells the court something that leaves Judge Lauren shocked. Apparently, while fighting, Miss Stovall would send compromising images of herself with other guys to Mr. Hines to make him angry. When these pictures are presented in court, Judge Lauren absolutely loses it and says the situation isn't funny. Do you think she takes the relationship seriously, Mr. Hines? Uh, in all honesty, with all the love I do have for her, I really don't feel like she takes a, re a relationship as serious as she says with her words because these photos are just small examples of a continuing cycle that I just keep seeing her with different men. I keep seeing pictures. I keep seeing text messages. I keep seeing bad interactions. Mr. Hines then admits that he also has not been faithful in the relationship. Whenever he would get angry at Miss Stavall, he would also cheat. But he never lied about it the way he claimed Miss Stavall was lying about it. Judge Lauren gets angry at this and says the whole situation is just plain messy. One of the biggest doubts has been the, the, how the pregnancy happened. My mom came to me and told me that the way that she got pregnant just doesn't add up from a woman's perspective. I am a woman, I'd like to hear it. Uh, if I could give the bailiff this calendar. Jerome, will you please hand up Mr. Hines' evidence? What is this, sir? This right here is just um, the, the conception and how the conception worked. The reason Mr. Hines said he was doubtful about the pregnancy was because he said that he and Ms. Stavall broke up in the time when little Robert could potentially have been conceived. The breakup happened because Ms. Stavall disappeared without telling Mr. Hines, and he, in turn, cheated on her. She left for this entire time and came back sometime during this week, the week of July 19th, and after we've been back together for a couple days, she goes off to the hospital or whatever with her mom and tells me, calls me and tells me that she's pregnant, crying. He had to be conceived sometime in here from my mom telling me about how women work. Mr. Hines says that he believes a friend of Ms. Stovall's fathered Robert because he himself was not intimate with her for six to seven weeks during the time of conception. Ms. Stavall contradicts that by saying that they were only not intimate for four days in between in that period. Judge Lauren says that's a huge discrepancy in their recollection. Mr. Hines, I have to ask you this. You believe that during this time is when she got pregnant? Yes. Who do you think the father is? One of her friends uh, on Facebook that's always talking to her. I've never been intimate with that friend ever, Your Honor. Judge Lauren says that she doesn't feel that either of them takes the relationship seriously, despite their professions of love. She says the stakes are too high, but the two lovebirds are stuck in their drama. Mr. Hines says he is prepared to love the child if he's the father. Now all they need are the DNA results. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Hines, you are the father. Oh. Ms. Davis and Mr. Wiggins appear in court to discuss the paternity of baby Aubrey Wiggins, whom Mr. Wiggins claims is not his biological daughter, while Ms. Davis maintains he is the father of Aubrey. Ms. Davis says he's just trying to remove responsibility from himself because he already has two kids with his ex-wife. Ms. Davis was working for a family member of mine and I seen her and she was looking good and um, she was walking up some stairs and she had on some really tight pants and um, yes. so I approached her, it was never supposed to be any type, anything else, more than just sex. No. But you didn't use We were together for almost two years and a half. We was never together. Judge Lauren completely loses it when Mr. Wiggins says he didn't want a serious relationship with Miss Davis and was only telling her what she needed to hear so she'd sleep with him. Mr. Wiggins said Miss Davis inboxed his wife on Facebook to mention the pregnancy and cause havoc in his life. So you're admitting that you just lying? I mean, right? wasn't lying. So you can sleep with her. No, 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 don't try to clean it up right. now. You said you did what you had to do to get what you wanted. No, I, well, I did say that you're You were a married I, man. Well, you sleeping with this girl. You approached her, pursued her, got into a two and a half year. It was not two and a half years. Miss Davis believes she conceived Aubrey on Valentine's Day. But Mr. Wiggins says nothing happened on Valentine's Day because he saw Miss Davis's Facebook conversations with another man and got pissed off. 
Judge Lauren angrily asks him why he was angry about that if they weren't in a relationship in the first place. How were you upset if you weren't in a relationship? Right. Well, because, because, I mean, I think more so it was because of just lying. I mean, you know, Chantrell was telling me, Miss Davis, that she was not with anybody else. So that's why I, I was wasn't. I never also, with anyone. Also, I had spent my money. We at this hotel. I had went all out for her in hopes that I would have a great ending that night. And so it pissed me off. Miss Davis further states that Mr. Wiggins signed the birth certificate as well. Mr. Wiggins says he didn't sign the birth certificate and suspects foul play because his birth date on the certificate was wrong because he only got a phone call for that information and in the background, he could hear Miss Davis laughing. So, Miss Davis, did you know the young woman in the hospital? Were you all friends? No, Your Honor. You say what? This birthday issue is just a typo? It's that he wrote. Do you think he wrote his wrong birthday on purpose? Right, and because what? No, when, I, when, when I seen it, when we got the birth certificate, I let him know that he, whatever he signed, he signed it wrong. Judge Lauren asks Mr. Wiggins if he's active in Aubrey's life, to which Miss Davis replies no. He says he was there at the start, but started getting distanced because Miss Davis would always tell him that it wasn't his child and he should back off. He says he also has sole custody of his other kids with his ex-wife. Again, I'm not trying to run away from my responsibility. Yes, Me, was. quote unquote, falling off was Miss Davis saying, you know, you ain't got to worry about her. This ain't your child. Not letting me get her. She says it's not moment. your child. Because I didn't want to be with her. Not letting heat of me the moment, get her. I, I probably be like, don't worry about her. But I never said that she's she not did. His. The truth is, you want your family back. Yes, ma'am. Judge Lauren asks both the parties when they were last intimate. Miss Davis replies that it was last night and they did not use protection. Judge Lauren explodes and asks them if they've learned anything at all from this situation. I guess only the DNA results can teach them a lesson. You are the father. <laughs> Miss Davis, what are you feeling? I've been going through this for a long time, like between him and his wife, like. It's his child. Right. You are the father. You have the clarity you need. I'm gonna take care of my child. This interesting case occurred because Miss Vogel conceived William while being married to Daniel Vogel, while also sleeping with Daniel Vogel's brother, David Vogel. She says they had sex under a bridge, which is when William could have potentially been conceived. Daniel owes $43,000 in child support and wants to get rid of the debt if he isn't the father. Do you believe William is your child during that time? Do you know about this sex with your brother? I had a thought that it possibly it was somebody in my family and I figured it was probably my brother. You start to think and things are going wrong in the relationship. It's like, wait a minute, you two must be getting together or something. And that's when everything started clicking in my head and I started putting dates together. Judge Lake is extremely surprised and asks Donna why she slept with her husband's brother. William interrupts to say that David Vogel has a snake's tongue and could talk anyone into anything. He further says that he believed David and Daniel to be his fathers at different points in his life. How, how do you get to a point where you're going to sleep with your husband's brother? He was good to me, and he just was that smooth that he just talked me right out of my... Can I interject for a moment? You'd have to actually get a better understanding of his brother, David. Uh, this man, he's got a snake's tongue. Uh, he could pretty much talk anybody into generally anything. Daniel Vogel says that he has been broke this entire time, and he hasn't been able to support his wife or three kids because all his money goes into the child support payments. Judge Lauren says you should refute the claim in due time if you suspect you're not the father. So once, William, you got word that potentially Mr. Vogel, Daniel, could, could be your biological father, how did the dynamic change then? Well, at that point in time, I, w I wanted to get to know my father. I wanted to get to know the man standing here before us. I actually took a little bit of time and actually had the opportunity to go and spend a little bit of time with him. It's a wonderful man. Judge Lauren tries to piece together the timeline and cannot figure out what's going on. Donna was intimate with David Vogel and Daniel Vogel both in the period of conception, so it's impossible to tell who the father is. Judge Lauren exasperatedly tells William she understands his confusion. What was going on around February 19th? You were gone? I was gone, yes. Oh yeah, he was gone. So the affair with the brother started when he was away? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So that February 19th is the bridge. Well, Your Honor. We'll just put a bridge. William, I understand your confusion, honey. This is a lot. William says the only reason he is here is that he has four young kids and he wants to be able to tell them who their real granddad is. And so we finally put an end to all this confusion. 
David says he wants some answers because he has a warrant out for his arrest for child support debt for a child that could potentially not be his. Mom, Ms. Know. Vogel, yeah. as you stand here in court today, has any of this testimony affected your belief? Yes, Your Honor, it is, because I just don't know. Well, that's why we're here. Daniel. I thank you for that. That's okay. That's all forgiven, Donna. It's forgiven. Has been, you know that. Miss Donna Vogel says she wishes it wasn't this way and breaks down crying. When asked by Judge Lauren how he feels about this, William says he's going to love his mom the same way no matter what. I suppose only the DNA results can piece together this heartbroken family now. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Daniel Vogel, you are his father. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much.